Aloha. This is Bear Wozniak coming to you from the most remote place in the world, coming to you from Waikiki Beach, high above the altar of the Catholic Church, St. Augustine's by the sea. It's right below our condo. We're up here on the 25th floor of the REAs, looking out towards the ocean. And as I love to say, it's perfect blue water. I don't know why they call it the Pacific, which means peaceful, because we can get some radical big surf here. And today it's corduroy to the horizon. The swell is coming in. So Cindy and I are looking forward. we got a brand new tandem surfboard coming in. We're getting ready for the big Duke Ocean Fest contest in a couple of weeks. So a uh, beautiful day here in Waikiki Beach. We have as our guest today, Stephen Thomas and his new book, Catholic Joe. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. It's time for men uh, to stop being victims. It's time for men to actually be men. We kind of dance around uh, uh, trying to be so careful not to step on toes. Um, it's kind of trying not to um, uh, offend uh, uh, women and uh, feminized men. Uh, but men kind of do that. That's what we do. We step on toes. Uh, you know, I, my my bride, Cindy, she loves to dance. And we do that quite a lot. Uh, but I guarantee you, as a man, I'm going to step on our toes from time to time. That's kind of our job is to step on toes, men. It's time for you to stand up, not be a victim anymore, not be looking for help from the nanny state, not be looking for uh, excuses for why you as an individual man can't just show fortitude. That doesn't mean you have to go out there and fight and win win the battle against uh, the woke cancel culture. Why don't you just win the battle in your own home? Love your family, love your wife, love your children, show fortitude in the midst of adversity. You know, I'll tell you, my dad, uh, uh, I've seen him hit his thumb with his hammer and not wince. But I've seen him before the Eucharist cry. When my Oof. dad was called to be a Catholic deacon, every time the host was elevated, he would just cry. And, uh, and uh, he, he, we would say, Lord, what is this? What is this? And then finally, the Lord said, I want, I'm calling you as a deacon. So, real men, we don't need to have, we don't need to be slobbering and, and acting like victims. And woe is me. And life is so hard. And ain't it, and ain't it, and ain't it all so bad? Well, that's what men are. Men are meant to be tough. We don't have to. You don't have to go out there and win the battle against the cult, cancel culture. Just stop being a victim in your own home. Man up. Get tough. Uh, People are saying, well, I want to get the kind of job that I can find fulfillment. In. I just want, makes me want to throw up. Real men find fulfillment in just providing for their families. You know, the the idea of having a fulfilling fulfilling job, I think, came along when feminism came along 50 years ago. I, and, 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 and I'm just going to say it like it is. And women decided they needed to become interior decorators at some point to find fulfillment. Well, men, that's not you. My grandfather was a coal miner. Uh, until 50 years ago, men didn't have the luxury of finding a job. He broke his back in a coal mine, and then he had to jump on the rails to to find work uh, during during the depression. We are we are feminized, victimized cowards, and so I'm not telling you to to rise up and get mean and angry. But a little bit of mean and anger isn't bad in your own life. Go to work, make a good living, have strong brothers. Not just talk about morality, be be a moral, upright man in your own home. Let your children see you pray. Uh, let them know that you're a man of God, and uh, and 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 that's how we win. We don't win by trying to to beat the whole woke cancel woke cancel and all that stuff is basically the way women fought when I was in high school. That's the way they did it. They canceled each other out. You know, they gossiped and canceled. Well, we're not going to gossip and talk about that about them. We're just going to do our jobs. You know what? Jesus said, even now the Father and I, we work. Men, get to work. And your greatest work is the liturgy. Liturgy means the, wor means the work of the people. Your greatest work is to pray the liturgy at the Mass and do the liturgy of the hour. In other words, pray. Get on your knees before the Lord. 
spend that time like Father Richard, Father Larry Richard says, no Bible, no breakfast, no Bible, no bed. Just do those things. Pray the rosary with your wife. And by the way, bring her a flower today. Pick one. It's, mm. it, find your own flower. My wife gets new plumerias or hibiscus almost every day. I don't want to spoil her. Right? You don't want it every day. But okay, we've got a real man in the house here today. Uh, his name is Stephen Thomas. We've been trying to get together for a while. I find you very interesting, Stephen. Uh, you're an entrepreneurial man. Uh, you, uh, you're an author. You've created many companies. And uh, you have a family, uh, I think, I, what is it, six children, is it, in the eight, Chicago? Eight kids. Eight. eight oh, kids. eight. Yeah. Yeah, you had yeah. to stop because you're running out of fingers. You had one for each member of a family <laughs> used up, you know. Yeah, so so you're a good Catholic man, and you're in Chicago. That that time, you know, I remember the first time I went to Chicago, Steve, Stephen. I got off the plane, walked out, and I was getting blown away. They called it the Windy City for a reason, and it was cold. You know, the wind it wasn't sure. winter, but the wind was coming off the lake. But uh, we got a man's man in the house, Stephen Thomas. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Thanks, Bear. I look forward to talking to a guy that's named after a bear. Yeah. Well, you know, my 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 ninja sensei, I was fortunate to, to train with the the first white, the first white ninja, uh, Master Stephen Hayes, and, and his uh, one of his instructors, uh, Bill Poet, gave me that name when we, I was teaching all the black belts. We would go out, uh, I would teach him how to surf, and I had a beard in that mm. day, and my, my sensei goes, I never... I never knew a bear could surf. And so I was his surf instructor. So when I would go into the dojo and I would teach, uh, he would call me Bear Son. And there we go, like, everybody's going, Why are you call him Bear Son? You're the mat, you're the sensei here. And he goes, Well, here's the he's the sensei in the water. That's how that kind of came to stick. But uh, okay, so enough about that. Let's talk about let's talk about Stephen Thomas. Uh so you you opened the show uh before we even got started, you talk you started saying you wish Somehow we talked about cigars in the first 10 seconds. Tell us about what you got next to you over there. So I got, I, I got a, a box of Immaculatas from Ave Maria that a Marine sent me who read the book. He wow. said he read the book. He was so moved. He said, he goes, I, I, he goes, I want to do something for you. And, uh, and he goes, what do you, you know, what do you, you, you like bourbon? And I go, well, I quit drinking about, you know, 32 years ago when we started having kids. So, I said, I like cigars. So he sends me this box of Immaculata cigars, probably 150, 175 bucks. But this Marine wow. who was blown away by the book um, sent that to me. And uh, so a uh, hat tip to him. You know, I remember my dad back in the day because he used to work with uh, uh, CEOs of small small companies. And he would have a retreat at his house up at Eagle's Rest, they called it, up in the North Woods of Minnesota. And the men would give each other gifts. I mean, I remember a man giving him a, a really nice rifle. You know, presidents yeah. of, you know, kings used to give each other gifts and these presidents of companies, you know. So it's a real manly thing to give a gift like that. But uh, uh, Ave Maria, I believe that's Peter Bond's company. And, you know, he publishes, I think, over a million holy cards. I think I have one with me right here, uh, Saint, Prayer of St. <laughs> Michael, uh, a, a year two, And he makes our own line of cigars, the Seven Virtues Cigars. So... Yeah, uh, in another form, we would enjoy a cigar together. I'm, I'm sure. I, you know, what is, what, what is it that draws you to the cigar? This is a whole, whole divergence. But what is it? You know, and it's, and it's distinctly kind of a man thing because you, you know, um, I mean, I, I think part of it is just we like to go deep. Sometimes mm. we like to have time where we can just go deep. We, we draw on the smoke, right? We, you know, and. Uh, and again, it's just um, there's something about the smoke that kind of just puts the defenses down and mm. you're able to just, you know, kind of lay it all out on the table. And um, yeah, you know, again, the Indians, they, they smoke a peace pipe, right? If they they wanted to kind of sit down and and, and, and do some talking. And yeah, but yeah, I love I love a cigar. I love being able to just go out and just just chill. And uh, in fact, this guy, he goes, uh he goes, yeah, he goes, I would, I'd smoke a cigar when I pray my rosary in the morning and, uh, Amen. you know, drink my coffee. And I thought, yeah, there you go. There's, there's a, there's a man's man, right? Well, it's interesting. Cigars really aren't bad for you. If you, if you moderate the net level of nicotine is very low, so they're not addicting and you don't yeah. inhale a cigar. You, you puff on a cigar and I'll, I'll tell you, I just wrote something uh, last week. My new, my new book coming out is going to be called morning man meditations for men of grit and grace. And I talk about, um, I believe it was G.K. Chesterton that talked about the pipe, the pint, meaning a beer, right? And the and the cross go well together. And and the point is he's making is that uh, this is what the common man does. This is what a man does. He has a cigar, 
he has a drink, a, a beer or bourbon. And uh, and he was talking about the, how the common man is the, is the source for common sense and how how the how orthodoxy and natural law and all that just makes sense. But for me, when I returned to the faith, um, you know, I started smoking a cigar when I built my cabin up in Montana and all these uh, all these no see uh, would show up and uh, uh, and bite me. I didn't know what they were. And I, so I asked the locals, so how come I'm getting all these these bites and uh, um, they said, well, those, and I can't see the bugs. And they go, well, those are called no see They said, if you smoke a cigar, they'll go away. But uh, when I returned to the faith about 13, 14 years ago, I would take my cigar and my, and my beach chair down to the beach about sunset. And I would read on my iPad, you know, because it was illuminated. And I would yeah. have one or two cigars. And it, I call them solitude makers. No one would sit next to me, you know, <laughs> except for on occasion, Someone would walk up and say, a man, a, usually a woman, some, sometimes a man, he would say, she would say, that reminds me of my father. Yeah, I love oh, that wow. smell of that smoke. And yeah. Anyway, yeah. we digress. So we're talking with Stephen. No, we don't. No, we don't. Uh, but yeah, I think I think it's a solitude maker. And it really is why I went deep into Tom, Thomas Aquinas and, and Augustine and all those guys sitting with a cigar. You know, it's, so I think it's, a, and it, it, it's just a great, a great unique it's our thing own incense me. right there it's our it's a yeah. form of incense right? i'll tell you i'll tell you in my condo i have we have a lot of windows up here but i have three air filters that cigar aficionado recommends surround my desk so that from time to time if i open the windows i can have a cigar inside you know because these <laughs> things filter out the smoke oh yeah. so my, my bride cindy uh uh you know she appreciates my my she you know she can be here without even knowing that i'm having a cigar just about anyway you know uh steve uh, let's let's talk a little bit about your own story, uh, your your own your first of all your personal journey before we get into talking about Catholic Joe. Sure, sure. Well, um, I was born a poor black child. No, actually, so I you know I grew <laughs> up. I I grew up. You're Italian, a, um, aren't you? Are you Italian? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm oh, not. you want to be book, though, don't you? You want to uh, be. Well, the the book is the book is a hundred percent Italian. Yeah. Um, and, and a hundred percent Catholic and a hundred percent marriage. And, but I, um, so really, um, I grew up, you know, one of four kids, um, parents got divorced when I was in high school. Um, father was an alcoholic womanizer. Um, but he, you know, it had since, you know, really came back to the faith and he used to pray his rosary every day. And he had his, he had these little beautiful pictures of our, our blessed mother and child by his bed and in his car. And again, very simple man. His father left him when he was young. Uh, my mom, uh, her father was a pedophiliac. And so she had to be mm. taken away from the family when she was young. So just a real, just a stew pot of just total dysfunction. And, um, and it was really from that, that, you know, um, again, the, leave it, leave it to God and our blessed mother to pick somebody that is just really, really messed up, uh, to, 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 uh, to do their work. And it was in, it was in high school. I picked up this little, it was like a little white booklet, mother of Christ crusade booklet. And, uh, and it was about Fatima and it changed well, my that, life. So some, okay. So yeah, let's take a break. we got to take a hard break here, uh, because we're about to get Things are about to get rolling, I can tell. So we'll be right oh, yeah. back with Stephen oh, yeah. Thomas, the author of this new book. Hey, re re raise your book up, Stephen. I know you have it right there. Right as here. Do, as do I. Catholic Boom. Joe. He's a superhero. He's a superhero. That's the correct name for him by Stephen S. Thomas. When you're an author, sometimes you use your middle initial. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Schoolofmanliness.com is a place for men of grit and grace to join together, to inspire, to encourage, and to challenge each other, to grow in manly virtue. Members receive morning man meditations, a monthly curriculum that is rich with audio, video, and written content, and a trail guide to help you map out your new trajectory. Many of our members lead their sons through this same curriculum. Your membership gives you access to both the man cave which is our non-Facebook type community, and the School of Manliness at schoolofmanliness.com. Become a member at schoolofmanliness.com. 
Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. My newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, has hit the top five in Christian books for a good reason. It's because men are searching for traction and a trail guide to live out the unique calling and the gifts that they were born with, that each man individually is factory loaded with by God. Paul said, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, do all things in love. Finally, here is a book that talks with men the way men talk with each other. Just plain old straight shoot. By the way, Mama Bears, this is your chance to get this message to your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com or anywhere books are sold. 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite the men to go to the go to schoolofmanliness.com. Uh, it's urgent to get there and join us. You can be part of the Man Cave, which is our non-Facebook community of men. We have Zoom meetups about once a month, and we just share what's going on in our lives in the meantime. And then there's a curriculum, School of Manliness. Uh, there's about three years' worth of curriculum in there, so we go through that once a month in the Man Cave. But you as a father can get a login for your son, not to the Man Cave, but just to the school, and you can lead him through it. And you'll love it because it's audio, it's video, it's written content, it's assessment. So love to have you uh, go to School of Manliness and be become part of the man cave and then and then bring what you have in the man cave into your own into your own life and start your own man cave there we'll be right back with i'm sorry we'll be right back we are back now with stephen thomas the author of catholic joe superhero uh so you're you're so all of a sudden you're talking about our lady of fatima so i knew i had to stop because that's where the story usually begins Ooh. for so oh. many people so t- tell us oh, about it that. Gets, tell, it, tell us. it gets good yeah i'm going to uh, tell you some blood curdling stories now so, um, so it was our blessed mother. Um, when I read that book, I mean, think about it. Some lady probably wearing a babushka dropped this little white booklet off in this church. And, and again, probably thinking nothing of it. And this, in this messed up high school kid picked it up, read it, changed my life. Uh, you know, I've got eight kids. I've got, you know, my oldest is a Franciscan friar, the renewal you know, all really? my kids do. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So all, and all my kids have, you know, they've done mission work in some way. So, um, so yeah. So anyway, so just, uh, we just been so abundantly blessed, um, because some woman probably put this little booklet down for, for somebody to find. So I just want to, I and just, she, and she, I and she didn't, up just, to, she didn't yeah. just put it down. She prayed. Yeah. She prays yeah, the right. rosary all right. day long. The, our ministry right. runs on on the prayers of those those women. Right, right. No, no. Yeah, good, good, good point. So, um, so I just, I guess, I want to, I just want to, um, just highlight the fact that you know, there's nothing wrong with 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 small things. I mean, just ask Saint Teresa of Lisieux. Um, so the small, mm-hmm. even the small things we do in life have great meaning, and you mm-hmm. never know the impact they're going to have. So, so our Blessed Mother, um, you know, again from very dark place. Um, she kind of plucked me out of the ash sheep and I just fell in love with her. And she just, you know, I just, I, I just devoured scripture, uh, just, you know, prayed the rosary constantly and just, you know, I just, she just had me, she had my heart. And so, um, and there were times, um, in my life where, where the evil one would 
come after me, right? In not not a uh, physical form per se, but but there were a lot of um, there were a lot of attacks, like spiritual attacks, because you know usually Satan stays, you know he he stays under the under the hood um, until he feels like his his dominion's being threatened, and so um, and so his his dominion was definitely being threatened. And again, it was it was God's grace and and it was our good good mother, um, and so um, it was from that that. You know, I, I again just just really um, devoured um, the Eucharist. I, I you know I went to mass every day, uh, and then eventually went into the seminary. So I studied for five years in the seminary. Got kicked out of one uh, because there's a bunch of crap going on. Um, that, you know, I'm not going to go into detail, but I and I you know I'm not one to just you know um, keep my mouth shut. So I, I um, brought it to our bishop. Bishop brought it to the rector and anything. It, it all hit the fan. Let's just say that. And then I ended up going to uh, uh, a seminary in Ohio and graduated from there and then went up in Mundelein and went to Mundelein Seminary for a year. And, and uh, it was great. My, my spiritual director, who's, who is a, just a exquisitely, beautifully, like he listens, he's got just the great gift of listening. And so, and usually he'll let you kind of own decisions yourself, right? And so I asked him, I said, I go, John, at the time he wanted me to call him John. I go, John, I go, um, I go, do you think I should be a priest? And he looks straight at me and he goes, no. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I had that so experience much for once. I had that exact <laughs> experience once. <laughs> so, bear so much for letting me own the decision. He was like, no. <laughs> and so, uh, so anyway, so I, I, I went and taught high school for a couple of years, um, met my wife. Um, and, and I quickly realized, you know, teaching in, in Catholic high school that, uh, they were telling me to get out cause I, you know, I wanted to have a family and they're like, you'll never be able to afford it. And I was like, ah, oh. so anyway, so I went into, into sales, did really well in sales for my father's company. Um, I was going to say, um, I'm an interior designer. Um, cause with your comments earlier, but I, I'm not, I, I was a sales guy and a designer too. So I, oh, I got no a little kidding. bit of the, did you find I got fulfillment? a little fulfillment? In your interior designing, though, was there? Was I have, I have found fulfillment, and I found that you know the gene. I have, I have the gene. No, yeah, that's a yeah. bunch of crap. Anyway, no, it was, it was, um, it was good. You know, and it's great, great opportunity to evangelize no matter where I went. And uh, exactly, you know, yeah. yeah. So, um, and then I went. Um, I created a company called VT Corporation. Uh, because my wife and I, we taught natural family planning for about ten years. Oh, um, I, I did. Yeah, I, I did chassis education. Um, for about the same same amount of time, and in NFP, we never got the resources we needed. We were always we were always pushed to the side, and and you know, and and again, it's this hard. is the thing that it's, fries it's really my hard. Own. It's hard to yeah. get funding as a Catholic. Protestants give a lot, but it's hard as mm -hmm. Catholic ministry. Well, I'm talking about NFP specifically. Yeah. So, um, so and again, that that's the one thing that gets me going is is the church again, I love the church with all my heart. It's Christ's bride. People in the church that that don't they don't give the proper recognition and resources to marriage. and i'll I'll get into that a little bit later. But anyway, so I um so taught NFP with my wife, uh, did tested education, started a company called Vita Corporation because I was tired of never getting the resources. So I started a company. It was a culture of life credit card, long distance, and it basically would generate money for these culture of life. Like we gave money to couple to couple league and crisis pregnancy centers and, you know, anything really to support the culture of life. And then we were actually, we were actually banned when banning wasn't cool. So when, once the bank found out how pro-life we were, um, I was the only person ever to get a program. It was MBNA bank at the time. I was the only person to get a program that had no members I was able to talk my way into getting the program. Uh, I had a, a bishop here in the diocese was the chaplain for the Knights of Columbus. And so um, he wrote me a letter and said that, yeah, we'll, we'll help promote it in the Knights of Columbus. But anyways, so I started that. We got ended, ended up getting banned. I just did like a big marketing push. Um, they canceled the program. So I was stuck with like, a, you know, a huge debt that I had to pay off that, um, you know, as a reminder. And then in 2007, I went online uh, to get a movie on Netflix, and I saw this particular genre, and it was the the gay and lesbian genre. And again, we love our brothers and sisters. We don't judge them. We love them. Um, but I didn't want any of that crap for my kids. So um, I started a company called Faith and Family Flicks, and uh, basically all you know, 
family friendly, you know, faith based. Um, not and some some weren't faith based. Some were just those you know those great classics, right? That we well, grew I mean, up with. Yeah, I mean, solid virtue though, in, 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 yeah. you know, demonstrated in them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my kids, um, so my my whole family grew up in in film. So my my wife has a film company, Immaculata Films. My son has a film company. He's starting young Catholic filmmakers. Um, he's starting a national organization for young people to really get involved in film. Um, so we, you know, I've I've taught my kids to, you know, if you if you got a problem with something, you know, don't don't bitch about it. Do something about it. And yeah. so, um, and so I've taught my kids to do that and, uh, and that's what they're doing. So, um, and so I also started a couple software. Well, it, well, um, it, it, is is yeah. faith flicks part of pure flicks now, or how does that work? No, actually. So, um, I was going to sell it to uh, a company I'm not going to mention right now, but, mm -hmm. um, but they, um, um, we had everything set. And then this one very prominent priest gets on the phone and he lowballs me and I'm like, that's not what we agreed to. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sell it for that. So anyway, so we ended up, we ended up closing it down. Um, mm. That was, uh, that was back in probably about 2012 or 13 or somewhere in there. Um, so we had it, we had it going for a while, and uh, and again, the whole purpose of it is we wanted to create our own distribution network because we wanted right. to create our own films. It's needed. I, this, yeah, yeah, Definitely yeah. Needed. So the story that I wrote. Um, again, we want to create move. We want to create our own movies. So that's part of the reason I started. Faith why you, why you, why you wrote in, and that's part of what Catholic Joe is about. We're talking with Stephen Thomas, excuse me. Once you become kind of a author, you put an initial, uh, between <laughs> your first and last name, Stephen S. Thomas, there will come a time when he becomes a very prolific author, when he will only use his first two initials and his last name, and he'll be S. S. Thomas. <laughs> But for now, we get to call him Stephen Thomas, yep. the author of Catholic Joe Superhero. It's a good book. It's one of those books you're gonna you get lost in. I started reading it, and I pulled out like like you know when when you're landing an airplane and you realize you're uh, you're coming abort, in too hot. Abort. Well, you're coming in too hot. Probably not the right yeah. word to use, but oh yeah, right. Uh, and, yeah. and you got to and you got to gun it because this is the book I want to read when we're when we're on a sailing passage and I could just you know hopefully there's good weather and i can just set up in the cockpit area and uh, and just kick back and let the let the autopilot do the work and let me just enjoy this book so it's a uh, joe catholic it's an adventure story um uh uh and superhero story uh catholic joe we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure and our guest ss thomas super author <laughs> Go to schoolofmanliness.com and subscribe to our weekly email to receive video YouTube links of the Bear Wozniak radio show, as well as the Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy TV show, which, by the way, is filmed in the tropics, as well as our manly evangelistic YouTube shorts. Go to schoolofmanliness.com. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our website, schoolofmanliness.com. We have our, our, our web store there that's got all kinds of cool t-shirts, my books, several books that we love are, are also posted there. You can go to our web store. You can also subscribe to our weekly news newsletter. If you get that, then you get uh, our, the newsletter Saturday morning and you get the video version of our radio show. So if you're enjoying this on Mother Angelica's uh, beautiful uh, uh, EWTN network, you can also uh, get this on on. Uh, YouTube video and share it with your friends. It's a great way for you to evangelize or evangelize, as we like to say. We have with <laughs> us today as our guest, the, a super author, S.S. Thomas, Stephen S. Thomas, and his book, Catholic Joe Superhero. Um, so now, so let's, 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 why? So wait, before we do the superhero thing, please don't make this too long because I want to hear more about Super Joe. But you, didn't you just, don't you, aren't you the kind of guy that likes to take long walks? Oh like yeah, the yeah. United so, States. <laughs> yes, and, and there's actually a tie-in with the Eucharistic pilgrimage. So, so about 18, 18 years ago, 
I was praying. I, you know, I was talking to our blessed mother. I go, mother, I go, what's something we can do just for your son? And you know how sometimes you pray and it just, yeah, you pray, but sometimes you get this a direct answer. I got a direct answer and it was like a national Eucharist procession. And so I tried roughly 18 years ago to get this going. And I, you know, and for one reason or another, it just wasn't the right time. So anyways, when um, I heard about the Eucharist revival from my son, who's a CFR, um, found out okay, very what, early what, on. What is a CFR? We, we don't, we're not um, all, so we're knuckle Capitan draggers France, here. You, okay. All right. So France, they're the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, which is, okay. I think CFR is Capuchin Franciscan Reformed or something like that. Okay. So, all right. So, um, you, so Father Benedict ahead. Rochelle was the, was the founder and, and as well as some other uh, other priests. So anyway, so um, so the whole uh, idea of a national Eucharist procession. So I brought it to Bishop Cousins, and then um, and then you know uh, there was a lot of pushback. But my son's order, one of the priests there, Father Bouton, um, was talking to him. And again, we're getting each other revved up. We're on the phone. We got to do this. Rah, rah. You know, this this is an ex-military guy on the other other side of the phone, yeah, and yeah. we're getting each other psyched and jacked. And and so uh, so it was really the the CFRs. That that because the bishops didn't want to do it because they were really uh, hesitant at first because again it's a it's a huge endeavor nobody's ever done it and but you know to their credit um, they they agreed you know to do it and and um, and it was so I was part of the process in the very beginning and then once they kind of like didn't need me anymore um, so a group of us guys uh, actually it was well, my you're, friend's you're kinda, idea you know, you're, you, you, let me tell you what an entrepreneurial person is he's a guy that is like a rocket he launches rockets before they're even fully put together right and he's assembling <laughs> them while they're while they're before they reach orbit once, once you put all that power and energy into getting yeah. it into orbit it gets it gets easier then you can then you can put together the uh you know the uh the space station up up you know little by little but getting it into orbit just needs a, a guy that's got a lot of passion and power and he'll get it done and so yeah. you got it moving, and now you now you came in with the second stage. And what did what did you do? Yeah. So a friend of mine said we got to walk. We've got to kind of walk the same path that you know. So we walked in the form of a cross. So from the north, south, east, and west. So I walked from the east. I walked from the we and we walked from Marian shrines. So I walked from the shrine of the Immaculate Conception. Wait, wait, wait. When was this? When was this? When was this? This is probably about almost two years ago. Two, yeah, years almost two years oh, ago. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's before the Eucharistic pilgrimage. Again, and you know, when I'm walking, so I walk through the Appalachian Mountains, and I'm, you know, I'm no spring chicken, and I, I didn't really so like you, train you, for you, this. Were, you didn't know you were. You, you thought you're going for a walk, and you end up going on a hike. You went on an expedition. <laughs> oh, we went. Yeah, we. I, I don't even. I don't think hike properly because we're again we're going through the mountains. There are times there where like every step was agony, and uh, there are times where I'm like walking backwards down the hills because they're so steep and my yeah, body I've is just that. like screaming you know it's yeah. like uh but i thought you know but it was awesome because you know god's grace and again i'm praying i'm praying for the success of the eucharistic pilgrimage because again Praise it was a god. dream that our our lord put on my heart um you know through our blessed mother and uh and again praying for marriage praying for our country because again our country had just gone through a, a bunch of just you know absolute chaos and um and so, you know, so anyway, so, you well, know, yeah. so I, I walked this pilgrimage with this group of guys. I was with um, Bud McFarlane, Randall Terry, and myself. By the way, you got to get me in touch with Bud McFarlane again. Yeah, I for get sure. I want to get him on my show. Yeah, Rand yeah. So, Randall, so Randall Terry is actually running for president right now. He's the, he's the Constitution Party ticket. Um, okay. And, he, and right. he, was, he was Operation Rescue, Randall Terry. So, um so uh so we had we had an absolute blast again agony during the day at night smoking cigars that you know those guys having a few drinks and just having the the, the best time and uh now, were, were, and now again, were you it, were you were you what i call white man camping were you in a luxury hotel every night or where were you when you well, say spent the night <laughs> you're such, <laughs> a, ra you're such yeah, a racist up, open up open up the uh, <laughs> yeah just saying you know the 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 you know we I know when I, I pedaled my um, bicycle across the United States, I stayed in some pretty seedy hotels. No, but I no, didn't. We, I didn't camp yeah. out in a tent. I was no, no. I mean, we went, we stayed in a van down by the river. All right. Oh, you were there with we were in Jim, a van with Chris Farley. Yeah, yeah, with Chris Farley. No, so Bud had a van. It was a white van. He had two bunks that were about like this wide. So yeah. you like if you if you turned over, 
if you if you wanted to change your mind in the van, you had to go outside of it. Right? That's how tight <laughs> so it was. So you were you were doing the real thing, the real adventure. For, well, for a while. And and then and then thankfully Randall came. Randall Terry came, decided to join us, and he had a bad back. So I didn't want him to have to stay by himself in the hotel room. So I, I agreed to assist him. Oh, you him felt it was like, yeah, out of charity, you, wanted to, you know. Yeah, yeah. But what was it? Was it a luxury motel? Like when I was doing my bicycle ride, it was, I, I knew, you know, because you're pedaling your bicycle and then it'll say luxury motel, free color TV, <laughs> free jacuzzi. Color TV. And you walked into the jacuzzi just full of mud and the and, the, oh, yeah. and, the, and you could smell the smoke in the curtains, you know, and the air yeah. conditioner just blows hot air. And in the hot air is all this moldy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And some of the times when you're out in the out back <laughs> like that and you're, you, you know, so, but it still was better than sleeping out outside on the rocks. Oh yeah. 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 I, I probably slept in the van for maybe a week and a half, something like that. Um, but, um, but, but yeah, think about when, Jesus. Uh, Jesus said, I have nowhere to, I don't have a rock to lay my head on. Yeah. And you're complaining uh, about a van hey, down by the river. Hey, Bear, listen, I'm not Jesus, all right? <laughs> Number one, I'm not Jesus. <laughs> um, uh, but I like him. I mean, he's, you know, he's 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 my my savior, my brother, he's a my man's friend. man. He is a man's yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so it was really what what preceded this book was this pilgrimage, and you know, and um, and just like getting back in the hotel, I can remember one time walking and just being in such agony, going, "God, please, please let there be a, j- a jacuzzi, please let there be a whirlpool <laughs> in this hotel," and and to get and God always comes through, and there there and there there was never like they don't have those anymore, right? Because the litigation or whatever liability, uh, but they had a they at this one they had a whirlpool and it was so nice, man. It was like, Oh, thank you, God. I was praising him as I was sitting in it. Um, but anyway, so we, we finished the, um, the pilgrimage, uh, it took about probably about six months. Um, I was on it for about a month. And, um, again, it was just something that, um, I felt called that, you know, again, Bud was the ringleader. He was the one that, cause I brought Bud in when we were going to be, we were going to be planning this Eucharistic pilgrimage. And then they ended up bringing some other people in and, you know, we kind of got squeezed out, which is fine. You know, um, it, that, it worked out fine. And so, um, and so, you know, um, I just tried to fill in for Bud to help, you know, I got, again, I got to walk from the Shrine of Immaculate Conception, which again, is somebody who's dedicated to the Immaculate Conception. Um, I found that, you know, just um, a great, you know, just a great gift. So, um it was after that that you know I sat down and really just hammered out the book. It took me about three months, um, and then, you know, like and financially, bear we're not, you know we live hand Wait a to minute, mouth. You just, what what I, did you do? What did you say? I said I hammered out the book. It probably took me this about, book. Yeah, yeah, but then then they had to edit it. So joke, you know, like so, you hammered it out in ninety days. Um, uh, give or take, give or take. It, there were times where I was like doing it all day. There are times where I just had to take little blocks of time. So, um, so I would say, you know, everything all in with all the editing, probably about nine, probably about nine months um, for w- with all the editing and stuff. Because there was, so, yeah, there was so you we got, had it so edited you went, like three times. Yeah. yeah. So you went through your stream of consciousness writing. You did the story just flowed out. Yeah. And uh, but then yeah, you just, got to rewrite the book. And yeah, by just the way, through, you know, yeah, we're talking about the book Catholic Joe. Uh, uh, superhero by ss yeah. thomas stephen s thomas and yes. uh and uh the process of writing is it, it actually um there is that phase of letting the stream of consciousness just flow at least the, the, the what i do and then there's a lot of work is the rewrite that's where the that it's yeah. like it's beautiful like i think uh, elon musk says it's really beautiful to write to build a prototype and to build the factory that's going to build one of his cars but then it's two years of 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 trying to save a penny here and find a find a way to save save a penny here to get your cost of sales. That's kind of like that. And re- editors are are your greatest greatest friend, but they can be brutal too. So oh yeah, people think people yeah. think editors are people that check your spelling. No, they're the ones that really help you tie that story together and make sure there's no loose ends. We're talking with yeah. uh, Stephen Thomas. We're going to talk more about his new book, Catholic Joe. When we get back, Catholic Joe superhero. Is this roughly based on my life? 
Yeah, I, I did. I mirrored it on your life here. Yeah. Uh, okay. We'll, we'll be right back with Stephen S. <laughs> Stephen S. Thomas and his new book, Catholic Joe. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. My 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? At schoolofmanliness.com or wherever books are sold. Mama Bears, get these books into the hands of your men. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our YouTube channel because we have, a, oh man, over a thousand videos up. We have our radio show there. We have a, we have a, uh, our Catholic Catechism there. We have everything there. So if you go to if you go to YouTube, and you subscribe, you'll get notified and, and ask get notified. You'll know when new things come out. And then this is how you can evangelize us to share our videos. And Cindy and I are working on something. We'd really appreciate your prayers. And um, that is called um, uh, Spirit of Adventure TV with Baron Cindy Wozniak. And we've we've been filming uh, some of the fun adventures we have here, living in the tropics in Hawaii, and then sailing uh, Spirit of Adventure, our sailboat in the in the uh, in the caribbean uh and uh and we're using that as a vehicle to communicate uh you know god's messages so um we ask you for prayer but if you if you subscribe to our channel uh you'll be notified when these when these videos start coming out uh, we're, we are talking with stephen s thomas the author of catholic joe superhero uh tell us about the book then how long have you had okay, this me... book in your heart go ahead go ahead Okay, so let me tell you. First of all, I, I I don't I don't know how to break this to you without really breaking you or hurting you. But actually, it was General Flynn. He was kind of like the first like. So prototype. it's not based on it's not based on my life then. It, it, it well, you know what? There there could be some overlap. You know, the Holy yeah, Spirit can do a lot of different things. So, <laughs> um, and actually, a friend of mine, still so a friend of mine, John John McGuire, who's a, he's an old Navy guy, right? I say old, he's like 70 years old, but he, he acts like he's 23. Um, and, and part of it was on his life too. He used to tell me stories. He's a great, he's a great storyteller. That's most and, Navy uh, guys was, are as, as the Navy. Yeah. Did he have a, does he have a beard by the way? I'm wondering if, how old Navy he is. Oh, oh yeah. He's got a beard. Yeah. Oh sure. yeah. He's old yeah. Navy then. Yeah. Yeah. He's, I yeah, love to he's hang got... around. I love to hang around people that sail because they all got stories. Some of it, some of what they say is true too. <laughs> yeah he he was uh he he was the uh the bully buster of the neighborhood so so i took little bits and pieces from the book from different people you know it's a fiction yeah. book but it's there's more truth in it bear than there is fiction um did a lot of research talked to a lot of people you know one um so my good my my good friend oh yeah my, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 it's yeah it, there's re you can tell you know what you're talking about in this book yeah, yeah. there so, so this one nun that taught me in high school, she's a Nashville Dominican, love her to death. She's really one of the reasons that I really, really converted. Um, um, she started reading the book and she was like, she was crying and, you know, just was, and then I brought, there was part in there where I, you know, I talk about corruption in the church and I mentioned like a bishops and, you know, there's, there's a, you know, the, the antagonist of the book is a, uh, is a bishop. And it's, it's, it, again, that's, that's based on an actual bishop and, uh, and she just, she, she like pulled back. She's like, whoa, I can't, you know, but I'm like, sister, I, you know, I, we, we, it's not perfect. Our church is not, you know, the bride of Christ is not perfect. And, uh, and again, it's not gratuitous, but it's part of the story. Um, but anyway, right. so yeah, the, the, a lot of the characters in there bear are based on real people. Um, and, and again, think about it. I, the reason I wrote it a couple, couple reasons. So one of the reasons was um, I just needed therapy. I was like, 
I just felt like I was like like uh, Bilbo Baggins said, like too much butter scraped over too much bread. And uh, I just, is that you know, possible? Still, is that is that possible <laughs> to have too much butter over too much bread? I don't know. <laughs> too little butter. I'm sorry. Yeah. Too little butter. Um, okay. The, yeah. <laughs> there. Yeah. The the words have meaning. I forgot that. Um, <laughs> so um, so anyway, so just you know, it was um, it was great therapy to be able to write situations. And as you get into the book, you'll see like. There, there's one story. Do you remember the Hawks? Remember when the FBI raided their home with guns yeah, drawn? Yeah, good, good friend of mine. Yeah, I got to speak. Yeah. I got to speak at a men's conference like about four weeks later with him. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so the, there's a chapter in there about the FBI raiding Joseph Salva, Lieutenant General Joseph Salvatore's home. Let's just say it ends differently than it did with the Hawks. Oh, and um, yeah. And, and again, there, there, you know, there's all these things that that maybe build up frustration in us. And I, again, as a fictional author, you can create your own reality. So it was, for me, it was therapeutic. Um, Isn't right. I, have you written, have you written before though? Um, other, not, other... not, not, uh, not a book, not a, yeah, not a whole I know, book. I know my wife knows that when I, when I, I, I do everything I, I do in life is so I can have those moments when I can write, you know, work hard so yeah. that I can have the freedom. Yeah. And it is, the, it is therapy when you write. It's beautiful, beautiful therapy. Oh yeah. Yeah, and you know, and I wrote I wrote a lot of this book in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel. You um, did? with our Lord exposed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so I was like you're, there's you, times like, in there. Like, yeah. Like John Pope John Paul did that, I know. I mean, that's just wonderful. That I mean how many times I've wanted to do that too. You know, just yeah, to go. Yeah, there I just and... Yeah, because I you know, um did, did you bring your laptop the in there? How did you do that when you say you wrote it? Yeah, because yeah, I you know, and, and unfortunately there weren't a lot of people there. Um and when I went in the morning, there was maybe there might be one person, but, but it was usually just me and our Lord. And so, so it wasn't um, intrusive. So, you could go it, with your laptop. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd go That's in the so back cool. and, you know, in the corner and, uh, but again, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in situation. There's times where like tears are coming down. You're, you know, you're in the scene, right? I mean, you are yeah, emotionally yeah. in the scene and there's times where I'm asking Jesus, I'm like, Jesus, how can I say this? Like, so Vinny has a bad mouth, right? He's an Italian brother. He's, you know, he's, he uses, I go, how can I do this so that I don't offend Catholics exactly, and yeah, but still be authentic? That. And, you yeah. know, so anyways, we we came to a truce with that. So did you, did I, you I, come I, to a lot of asterisks in your yeah, book? Yeah, we did. <laughs> we did a first letter, asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. Um, and uh, yeah. Vinny was so mostly that, that, asterisks and every now and then a letter. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. <laughs> and uh, so, um, but again, you want to be authentic. You don't, you know, I'm, I'm right. sick and tired of, you know, I mean, it's good to be pious, but we have to be authentic. And, you know, I mm. think true piety really grounds itself in authenticity. And I and know, I just, yeah. um, you know, I wanted this book. So and another reason I wrote this book, Bear, is to give men hope. Because I, I, see, I see a mass of men, myself included at times, that are just without hope. That that are just they're not leading. They're they're just they're they're afraid and they're following. They're just they're like a you know like a you know an animal that's that's got a spotlight on it and just just paralyzed. And I'm sick and tired of that crap. And I just I want men to have hope. And I, and also I wanted to be able to ignite within their souls and their hearts a fire that cannot be extinguished. And so this character is an iconic character. Catholic Joe. The the word Joe is. Is innocuous. It's, it means everybody, every but man. This jo is but it's also every Joseph. Man. It's also Joseph. Exactly. Though, the, the well, let me Jesus. tell you. Yeah. So when I everything I do is for our blessed mother, right? And so I'm getting ready to type into the Immaculata, and she was like, "No." She goes, "This is to be dedicated to my most chaste spouse, Joseph." And I was like, "I didn't have a deep devotion to Saint Joseph." Yeah, he's the I terror of like, demons, okay. dude. Terror of demons. Well, well, I wrote, I wrote in there how he got his title, Terror of Demons. You did. I didn't, I'm sure. Did. Tell, tell me. I, can I'm you sure tell at us? some point. I, I'm sure at some point there, I'm going to pay. I'm going to pay for that one to actually have the the gumption to you know put in there. Well, how he got the title. Um. So let me let me share a story with you real quick. So yeah, we got um, we got March... about two minutes to wrap. So oh, all right, March nineteenth. Um, I said, a, a Feast of St. Joseph, I said, I, I I just finished the book. I said, St. Joseph, you need to tell me if I need to st start another book. I, I need a sign. And I never asked for a sign. So anyways, this lady calls me who I talk to a handful of times a year. She says, Steve, I was just praying and I had a vision. And she has visions. She goes, I saw you standing at a podium and I saw standing next to you, St. Joseph. 
he had a staff in his hand and he handed you his staff. She goes, does that mean anything to you? And I just laughed to myself and I go, yeah, I need to start writing this next book. Anyways, the staff that he has in the book, he uses it to vanquish the demons. And That's cool. That is cool. Yeah. Well, 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 Stephen S. Thomas, uh, your book, Catholic Joe, it's so cool. You know, I have the coolest job in the world because I get to talk to people that normally wouldn't even want to bother with me, wouldn't even talk to me, but because I have a radio show, I get to talk to them. But I'm so glad to uh, to get to know you. Yeah. And, uh, Great. Hopefully we can hopefully we can have a cigar together sometime. Oh, I'd love it, man. Yeah, I would love it. And there's another one coming out. There's another one coming out, Beer. I've got and the next one's going to be better than the first one. Um, it's going to be no, really, where, it's going to go really deep. Where can they find your book, Catholic Joe? Just go to CatholicJoeSuperhero.com. Please go to the website. Don't go to Amazon. Because Amazon, they yeah, they just they string you out and they don't pay you that much. But it's CatholicJoeSuperhero.com. CatholicJoeSuperhero.com. And uh, get the book there, and uh, let me know what you think, Bear. I want to. I want to get your feedback on it. I'll, I'll, you'll know. It'll be. It'll be a couple months before I get back on the boat. But you'll know because right. I'm saving it for the boat, saving it for our, our right. next passage. Fair, fair uh, enough. All right. Yeah. So uh, we we need more men like we need our men uh, in the in the church to uh, to step up and to be men. You know, my book, Twelve Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? I haven't mentioned it the whole show, but it's been it's been in the top. Um, the top rankings of its of its category but i use the word man 12 rules for manliness just to provoke people i know you know can't even <laughs> use the word man anymore but uh anyway we yeah, gotta go yeah. we've been talking we got okay. we, yeah go ahead what are you gonna say you got it just a few seconds no 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 no. i just i was gonna say this literary agent he goes he met with me he goes i only, I only met with you because i wanted to see who had the the, the gall to put to name a book Catholic Joe superhero. So he was yeah, like, uh, that's yeah. cool. That's cool. Well, we yeah. wish you success. It's important. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak adventure. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.